Hello, my name is Gene Montristelli, and I am the editor of TappingQ&A.com, and the video that you are about to watch is an interview that I did as part of the 24 Hours of Tapping. The 24 Hours of Tapping was a free event, which was a fundraiser for the Peaceful Heart Network. The Peaceful Heart Network provides training and trauma relief tools to those in war-torn countries, as well as working with refugees all over the world. They've been able to help out over 200,000 people all over the world. After you watch this video, if you find this video something that was useful, the very easy way that you can say thank you to the guests for giving their time and sharing their expertise is to go to 24HoursOfTapping.com slash support and make a small contribution to support the Peaceful Heart Network. Again, that is 24HoursOfTapping.com slash support, and I hope you enjoy this conversation. The first thing that we are going to do is I'm going to bring in my first two guests. My first two guests are um, Gunila and Oof, are the co-creators of ta Trauma Tapping Technique, also known as TTT. It's a simplified way of using tapping that makes it so much easier for people to engage with it who are not used to doing this sort of work. Um, for over 15 years, Gunila and Oof have been involved in international humanitarian work in countries including Rwanda, Congo, South Sudan, India, the United States, Canada, Sweden. The people they have trained have worked with folks all over the world. And so without further ado, what I would like to do is I would like to bring Oof and Gunila onto the screen. Good afternoon, good evening. Both of you are in Sweden. Thanks for hanging out with me today. Well, how could we not hang out with you? We're amazed. Thank you. Thank you so much for everything you're doing. It's yeah, wow. I don't know we're what, humble. What to say after this? It's like, <laughs> wow. You know, it's like, <laughs> it's been like fantastic. Well, it was when, when, when we were kicking around the ideas to do this, and I've known the work that you guys have done for a while, it was just a really simple thing to reach out and to, to do this. And I want you to know that the speakers who are helping us out today, all of them said yes so quickly because of the amazing work that you all are doing. So with that being said, let's, let's talk a little bit about the Peaceful Heart Network, the work that you do. Um, let's get into what TTT is so folks, we can do a little tapping to start our day. What's the best way for us to step into all of this? Hmm. Yeah, that's a good question. I mean, that uh, first of all, just like to say, I mean, thank you so much for this invitation. And thank you. And, I mean, uh, no limit to the way of zillion thanks for doing this fundraising. I mean, it's, it's so fantastic. And we are astounded, if that is a good word in English. I mean, <laughs> so, in, in so, awe. So, <laughs> sorry, what did you say? In awe. <laughs> we are in, in awe. awe. Exactly. In awe, that's what you say. Awesome. So, yeah, so how so. did you then originally kind of get interested in tapping and creating a, a simpler version, a really easily accessible version of tapping tools that many of us are used to using? I mean, in a way, it, it started, I can say, under an acacia tree in South Sudan at that time, Sudan, because there was still a war going on. And I was there as a journalist, uh, because I'm also a journalist, interviewing this young child a book of 12 years and um, you know when you need a, a good story you need to ask details you need to ask what did you feel like what did you do what did you wear uh, what did it smell like and she had been through these horrific things of being abducted and her family had been killed and the village burnt down so then by seeing this um, situation and realizing of course not for the first time but it was like it had been growing in my mind this, that when you ask those questions, you're actually asking those most re-traumatizing questions because you're raising all the senses or the memories um, that is it has uh, taken in through your senses because that's how we perceive the world. Um, she got more and more silent and not, you know, telling the story, of course, because she went into her trauma as a re-traumatization. Of course, I got my story and I was also in a hurry because there was still war. So we had to get out of the, the country. I mean, we coming, you know, having the access to getting in and getting out uh, for her, of course, staying there. And so I actually left her with an open wound and realizing that for this time, then another time and another time, um, I decided I have to do something that makes this possible to tell stories without being um, risking to re-traumatize somebody. Right. I was already uh, a, a body therapist of other kinds, uh, but I had not learned 
tapping at that time. So when looking for something to do, um, finally a friend of mine, she, she recommended TFT. I thought it sounded this thought field therapy, which is then, as many of you know, the original uh, tapping version by Dr. Roger Callahan, um, founded in the beginning of the 80s. And uh, I thought it sounded very weird. You know, it's like, you know, there are so many different kinds of, of techniques, therapies. And in Sweden, of course, like in the US, there are numbers and numbers and numbers of, of different techniques and therapies. So it had to be a second person who recommended me to, to get into a training and do it. And there um, I found this. And you could actually show one of those slides with this journal Absolutely. of clinical psychology, which was in the material that we, if you go another time, there, this one, the, the, the one before with the, with the journal. Yeah, so this um, article was actually in our educational materials. This was in 2006 when I did this training. And this was actually the first um, article published in um, the Journal of Clinical Psychology in the US. And I'm sure that um, Dr. David Feinstein would also <laughs> mention this later on when he talks, because we have been a lot in communication. He knows very well Dr. Carl Johnson, who was the main writer of this. And this gave me the idea to share tapping in other parts of the world where I had been as a journalist. So that's actually how it started. And so now that you got going, what does what does the work look like now in the communities that you are going into? Yeah, I mean, um, what happened then was that if you show the, the picture of the doctor called Carl Johnson, was that I, I contacted this. This is Carl who wrote the article. <laughs> so I wrote this. Uh, I one time I called it naive and then Ulf changed it to bold uh, email to Dr. Carl Johnson and asking, oh, I read this article and you have been to different places because the article was written about the, the, the experiences in Kosovo after the, the war on the Balkans into, in the early 2000s. And they had successfully been teaching and treating people with TFT, with tapping. And so I would really like to do this because I know people all over the world who have been through many challenging things. I would like to share this. Can you teach me? Can I come with you if you're going somewhere? That was how this started. And, and we went to Rwanda and Burundi. So this is Rwanda. And from there, I saw that TFT made people confused. It was too complicated. If I, it's, not, mm -hmm. it's a perfect, uh, very good uh, uh, version of tapping. It's not that. But when I saw that people got confused of certain things, I thought this has to be simplified because this tool is too good not to be shared widely, not one to one, but widely. That was my mm -hmm. idea. And that's how I met Ulf and how we started to develop this that became TTT. So Ulf, you came in at that point, then what did that conversation look like? How did you start to find a way to simplify this? Well, it was, I mean, basically I came in from, uh, from having worked with hypnotherapy, with hypnosis and with NLP neurolinguistic programming, and they're both language based. So I was really looking around to see if I could find anything that would allow me to work with people who have anxiety issues or, or other issues of reactiveness or trauma without necessarily speaking because the language barrier. So mm -hmm. I found the blog of Gunilla and it just struck me. That's kind of wild and crazy. She's Swedish. I'm Swedish. But I sent her an email, another bold email. And I said, you know, if that really works, <laughs> if it really works, I want to see it. So next time you're in Sweden, let me know. And half a year later, she was and we met up and I, I was there's a story to that, but we won't go into that now. Well, that, that's a right. story we often tell. But in short, uh, I saw that there were components here that um, that were related to hypnotherapy. There's a trans moment where people go inside and they you're creating a safe space quite immediately. You're not talking to do it. And the safe space allows everything to happen. You're doing a juxtaposition with, you know, the normal reaction people have. All of that was fascinating because it was so immediate and so fast. And I, I too, am, am a fan really of solutions how how do you bring people to many how do you uh do this in a way that politically might work so we really spent time discussing and saying you know is this a treatment or is this first aid and that's where we landed on first aid because that's anything a child can learn first aid is you're right. not prohibited to try doing mouth to mouth or heimlich you know regardless of who you are and what your background is so we really wanted it to be a or the emotional first aid for trauma specifically 
And that's mm -hmm. because Dr. Carl Johnson said, find the most vulnerable populations and help them because nobody is helping them. Yeah. So that would build on uh, being careful with the name of it, calling it a technique instead of a treatment. It meant eliminating certain aspects like eye movements and stuff that Gunilla had, had already looked at that weren't received as well in certain populations and actually could trigger stuff. Uh, mm -hmm. We also looked at how can we make this work without language, but it turned out that working without language is also an advantage if you're doing a peer-to-peer -peer method because the moment you start talking, you're at risk of triggering stuff that you have no idea about because you don't know uh -huh. where language goes. So by focusing on working language free, we've found that a lot of people that learn the trauma tapping, tapping protocol, which is in part about being clean in your approach, not assuming stuff, not necessarily going any place, just connecting ever so lightly. That means that it's possible to treat people and help them with reactive symptoms for trauma. Even if trauma is serious, anybody can do this because there's very, very extreme low risk of anything happening. And this is and the I theatrical part where I ask Gunilla, Gunilla, in all these years, over 10 years, how many times have we in huge trainings with hundreds of people that are traumatized ever run into an ab reaction? Yeah, it's even 15 years. So, uh, and that is zero. I mean, we never had an ab reaction and working with populations of survivors of the genocide in Rwanda, refugees, um, women subjected to gender-based violence. And so, so this is really a very safe way of dealing with it. So you can just go... Would you like us to do one tapping so that you get? To I, I would love to do. Yeah, I would love to do that. But I just like to make one comment about that, and, and I want to. I want to highlight something that you just said there, is that if you are a well-formed practitioner, mm -hmm. you're in a circumstance where you know how to take care of yourself. Like I am, mm -hmm. I'm very, very clear on what is safe for me to work on, what is not safe for me to work on, and for me, that's two-dimensional. One is what is safe for me to work on because of the skills that I have. One of the phrases that I like to use is tapping does not qualify me to work on something. If I'm qualified to work on, I'm qualified to bring tapping to it. But just because tapping can be used on something doesn't mean I'm the right person to be doing it. And the second is because I'm well-trained and well-formed, I know what is safe for me to be working on a client because I'm working from a, a trauma-informed disposition of my own experience. And the moment we start giving something to a general population where you know, we have hundreds of people on the line and you've worked with thousands of people and I've worked with thousands of people who are good hearted helpers who don't necessarily mm. recognize some of the pitfalls that you're talking about here. And so by creating a way that you can share with someone else that I'm teaching you, I don't have to worry about me being traumatized because of the story that you are sharing, because we can start with something very, very surfacey. And all of a sudden, because it is so powerful, we find this deep root cause and someone off of the streets who's not well formed to be able to deal with that can find themselves in real danger. And so I love the idea that we're doing something in some simple way that allows people to be helpful, but safe for everybody involved. And allows exactly. people to continue to treat themselves after, which is the key point of this. Yeah, They're becoming their own helpers. And this David is, Feinstein is, is going to talk more about this, I, I assume. But the tier number one in his paper uses of energy psychology following catastrophic events is immediate relief stabilization. Yeah. And then the second tier is reducing limbic arousal to trauma-based triggers. And these two things are something that the TTT is designed to do. It's designed to be simple, simple to remember. And, and you know, let's, let's get around and try it. But also we'd like to, maybe there's time if we can show just some of the images of, so people get the idea of what kind of groups of large groups of people we can be working with with this. Absolutely. And so we can do that in either order. We can we can show you the groups that we're working with. We can do some tapping first. How Which order do you want to do that in? I think we just do, uh, I mean, you're starting with the tapping so that everybody knows what yeah. it is we're talking about. It feels awesome. good. Great, let's do it. So, so we just, if you just go to the drawing, the black and white drawing the, uh, um, that was before this one and then in there. So this is just our shortest instruction for this that we are made on small, like um, what you call it, business cards and on yep. posters like the one before, but we'll go stay with this one. And we call it trauma tapping technique, like we've said before, because we have focused really like Dr. Johnson said, we're really working on Dr. Johnson's, what he calls it, legacy. Is that correct? I mean, yeah, uh, on legacy this works, word. Yeah. yeah. Um, and that was this that uh, Ulf mentioned, but also this that um, so many people are traumatized and so few get help because at least in Sweden, a therapist, many, and also the psych, um, 
uh, in uh, healthcare, they fear the trauma to work with trauma because it has become a big word. So it's only specialists within psychiatry that are supposed to to help people with trauma, which makes it few getting the help because there are not mm-hmm. many. And so, so this is, but with this and all it, calling it again, first aid, this is, we don't say that this is, you know, it's a treatment that will solve everything of the earth trauma, but this is something you can do. So that's why we call it trauma tapping technique. So you, when we talk, it's really, we focus on trauma, making it that those people being traumatized are often connected more or less 24 seven to what it is that they have been experiencing or very easily right. triggered. So yep. that's why we say like they think about, so we can do it together now, think about whatever bothers you. So you just connect internally, you expose yourself internally and connect to that feeling. I mean, that we all know about tapping. And then approximately 15 times on each point, and we use these points indicated here that we will do. So we can just start by, you know, um, tapping on the side and on the side of your of your and this um, karate chop point that we call it at least in my training of TFT. And we say like 15 times, approximately. So we mm-hmm. do a bit more than most people will say in EFT, for example. And that is not that we say that, oh, you could do this or that. But it is somewhere there we have found that uh, for us it feels good. So from there, actually, we have added a thing. And that is putting your thumbs on your, on your uh, temples and making this crown pull that also... David Feinstein's fantastic wife, Donna Eden, um, teaches as a crown pool. So we call it that. And mentioning it, it's from her. Giving this massage to your prefrontal cortex, to our logic um, uh, and executive part of our brain, which is offline when we are traumatized. So we do it. And also, of course, it feels good. Many people find it feeling very nice to give that kind of massage. And then you go for this first above the nose so you just keep tapping like just following what we do so you don't need to count and then you just follow the eyebrow to the outside of the eye and most of you know these points because these points in the face most tapping versions using so and then under the eye and then one hand under the nose and then doing this Lovely self-care and first aid is so fantastic to have this treatment at your fingertips. It's kind of, in a way, I would always call it, it's magic that we Mm -hmm. have this possibility to heal ourselves. And then of the chest, we don't do only this K27, that some will know the name of the acupuncture point, but all over the chest, because it's not only that point, because here you have the muscles that contract when you are anxious. You have um, lymphatic um, points, you have the sternum, and behind there is the thymus, and so what Donna would call the thymus thump, but it's also just to massage your immune system central, um, etc. And of course, the heart is there in the lung, and you help yourself to, to release some of this tension in this part. And it's also a part which some um, according to some research, will release some oxytocin. And then we put the hand on the shoulder and then tapping on this side here. And the reason we put the hand on the shoulder is also because original trauma tapping, we teach always, not, a co- not during the pandemic, but otherwise, to tap on somebody else. And then when you ask the person to put the hand o- here, you are like protecting also the front part of your body which are sensitive parts. So you go from there. And then we do all the fingers, as you see on this. So we start with the little finger on the inside of the finger. So we go here. And then we don't say that, oh, this is the best points, but we know that these points work. And and this is how we do our instruction material. Since we do a lot of instruction material, we have to stick to the same uh, points all over and over otherwise we have to revise everything over yep. uh, many times and then we go back to the chest because we have found in our um, work that so many people love this chest tapping even if and also small children who doesn't fall asleep you just sit beside the bed you all, all know that just tapping a little bit on the chest most of them will just um, relax and fall asleep and then you just release your hands and then we say and the next and then take two deep breaths 
And so you breathe in with your nose. You hold your breath for a while. And then breathe out. Because holding the breath is also very good because it um, increase the um, uh, oxygen in your, your heart and in your blood and then breathe out. And so that is releasing. And then we always repeat. So it next says, uh, repeat the whole sequence. And then you do it on the other side. So if you did it on the left side, you now do it on the right side. And if you don't remember, it doesn't matter. But most people will start with the dominant hand and tapping. So that's why it's often the other side, the non-dominant hand that you do in the second round. And then just do the tapping or the stroking or the crown pull and then the about here. And this doing it twice, we call in, we have also written a book called Trauma Tapping Technique. The first version was called Resolving Yesterday. And that is um, what we call washing and rinsing because some people ask them, why do the same thing twice? Yeah. And then one of our colleagues in Rwanda, he explained to some women in the village and saying that, but you know, when you're washing your clothes, first you wash it with soap and you take out the clothes and you wring it and getting the water out. That's the breathing. But then you always rinse. So you put clear water and you rinse and then you wring your, wring your clothes again. Uh, and that is the two rounds. And then you hang your clothes on a, over a bush or on a line or something. And then if you see that there are still some spots on clothes, you will wash again. And that means that if you still didn't feel calm, you just do it again. So it's not that, oh, it's only two times. And then um, I do it on that side. Yeah, so it's because it's mirrored in on the... <laughs> um, so it's not only, if, even if our instruction is twice, you can also do it, of course, again. Um, until feeling calm. And a nice thing with the round, you know, when you're doing two rounds and moving around like this, and there are other techniques that we use as well, and some of them require distractions because you don't want the mind of a person to go wheeling into uh, Pandora's box and, and opening too many things while you're doing this. But actually, there is a distraction built in in the changing of the points and the re repetitive um yeah, Procedure. I mean, that is so good in that sense. As the time for know. two rounds is more or less five, six minutes, which is the perfect timing in the window of, of where change can happen. So in the end, you take two more deep breaths. When done with the second round, and you breathe in again. And then you can just sit for a while with your eyes closed. That's how we do it. And then... You just check what feels different. And this and is something that we're, yeah, this is something that we talk a lot about. We're working with traumatized populations. We're not looking to resolve a specific issues. We're not doing therapy. We're looking to create a change and a move towards safety and away from, from reactiveness. So instead of going directly jumping to, you know, where is your SUD now, which is kind of focusing on one issue as if there is, because trauma right. is often complex. It's a complex thing that has happened over a long time when it's post-traumatic. So, well, in, in that case, just asking what do you notice that is different as the first question is actually quite important instead mm -hmm. of jumping back to the, to pre, to the starting issue. And, and that's the, I love that question. That's the question I always use with my clients as well. What did you notice? Because what did yeah. you notice is, one, it's a safe question. Yep. Two is, if you're in some sort of setting, like even when someone is helping us, sometimes it's easy for us to be performative, wanting to do a good job for the person yep. who is helping us. Exactly. And by asking the question, what did you notice? It's open-ended enough that it gives them the opportunity to go, oh my gosh, there's this amazing relief or, oh yeah. yeah, I now notice this thing in my stomach, but you're just creating the space for them to be in it. The other thing I think that's really valuable in what you're talking about here is there's a huge difference between emotional first aid and triage and doing treatment for some deep initial sensitizing event. And they can look very, very similar. We're tapping on mm. the exact same points. Even doing emotional first aid saying reminder phrases can mm -hmm. look very, very simple to doing something complex and recognizing that the goal of what this is is stabilizing and creating safety in the moment. Mm -hmm. And that is the and most valuable thing we can do for someone when they're traumatized in the moment. And, and with the people we work with, we don't 
work with reminder phrases or set up phrases yep. or anything like that because they you have no idea if they might be triggering of something because it's like a hashtag right. you have no idea where that might go so and right. there's no need i mean if you're if you're in a tra traumatized <laughs> moment if, if there is trauma in your system connecting ever so lightly is always enough and that's probably one of the reasons why we don't have uh flashbacks even in large group sessions yeah. with people who have been through unimaginable stuff yeah and and and, and the reason being that we really uh, use this technique as we say, with big groups. So, I mean, you can sit since nobody has to share what it is, whether it has something connected to shame or something mm -hmm. that you have done because we work also in prisons, you know, and perhaps, I mean, you can have, heal things even without telling that thing. And then you can sit in a huge group and everybody just do the tapping, you know, it's, it's, and it's really so safe in the, in that way. And we can share it with others because our, for Peaceful Heart Network, it's not that we go around all of the world all right. the time. Um, it is that we teach others to to take it further. I mean, that's the whole point of this. Why we call it also network. Uh, it's not Correct. it's not us being the the no. guys I mean, going everywhere. We, we've been in. A, I mean, we we have we have been spreading the trauma tapping technique in this in this kind of model in over thirty countries. Uh, so we reached quite a few people by now. Uh, we're always trying to discuss how many they might be when we try to calculate it. But we're, we're our right. guess is around two hundred thousand. That's that's where we're thinking that's awesome and one thing the other thing i like I, I, i'd really like to highlight that you're doing here i i am i'm a person that every single morning i set a stopwatch for either five or ten minutes depending on the morning and i do wordless tapping and yeah. like like we know and david's going to be talking about this in a couple of sessions we know simply stimulating those points drops cortisol levels and there's value to it and um I just want everybody to hear like the most common question I get at the tapping Q and a website is what are the phrases for? Like not like what phrases do I use? And then they insert an issue. What are the phrases I should tap on for my weight or my anxiety or whatever? And the words are not magic. And I love the fact that because the other thing that happens, and I think this is good for all of us to hear teach tapping to other people is when you're working with a, a really skilled practitioner who finds words effortlessly, you're like, yes, mm -hmm. obvious. That's great. And then you go home and it's like, oh, I can't come up with those magic words the way mm -hmm. that that person I just tapped with did. And so by introducing people to a technique that there are no words involved, like unless they're poking out their own eyes, it's really hard for this to go wrong, which makes mm -hmm. it really easy for people to do it on their own. Mm -hmm. yep. And that is so true because we have also, I mean, met many people who have done trainings in other uh, tapping modalities and they have not started because it is like they end up, yeah. oh, what should I do? You know, what should yeah. I say? It's a, get and then the we phrases say, right. Yeah, just get, yeah. get, get going <laughs> with this tapping and then you can go, you know, and then you, you, you will find uh, that way. Just first like you said, notice what happens yeah. in you and ask others what happens, you know, what is it you notice? And then yeah. you can go further. And Gwyneth Moss, she teaches, she says, you know, you can start out with, with TTT as a starting point and then yep. you can go from there and you can start adding phrases and anything that you want to add uh, on top of that. Another thing that we do is when we're working with groups, we also combine it with a general setup, which is a somatic poem. And we also mm. combine it with music, which adds uh, interaction and, and collective um, healing. And, 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 that, and that was actually, the, that was the thing I wanted to ask you about next, because you have shared with me, I've actually watched <laughs> it a couple of times this morning, this absolutely magic video of you incorporating tapping with music. Um, I know, mm -hmm. Ulf, like, that is like part of who you are at your soul. Like, they, like I know <laughs> that true. you're probably on your way to a gig once we finish doing this this evening, <laughs> out playing in the world, and you love music that much. So how did you decide to take these poems and music and combine them with tapping and what's the benefit of that let's talk about that a little bit and then i'll just show the really cool video of you doing that all over the world i mean yeah. again I, then i would say that it actually didn't start by us and uh, because okay. where we go we always learn something from somebody so this yeah. with the music it actually started in in west africa mm -hmm. in sierra leone uh, where we had a training um, with peace mothers. They were part of an organization working on reconciliation after the civil war uh, there. And then these women who were the peace mothers because they were all widows of the, of the war, they came walking, you know, three, four hours from the villages in the best dressing, best clothes, and, you know, um, and, and, and for this meeting where they were discussing some of the reconciliation stuff. And then they had invited us because it's like we say, we never come to a place saying, hello, who is traumatized, who wants to have tapping. Right. We always work 
through existing structures, through an organization who already has the trust of the people. And then it's easy because then you know somebody there, like a, one contact person or it's an, somebody who, who have heard about your work. They learn first and then they will introduce it to their members. So these women, they came and they are in two clips in this video that we're going to show or you're going yep. to show. Um, yeah. uh, and uh, so we were just astounded that suddenly they started to make uh, like a text um, that we understood was this is how you do the tapping. And then some of the drummers, they made the rhythm and suddenly they were doing, you know, a song like this. Five, five seconds, 10, 15, you know, two minutes. They had done this rhythm to remember the, the, the sequence when they went back to the village. And, and also and because traditionally they heal through dance and singing. And that's what we all did all over the world before. But some of us have forgotten it. <laughs> I was, uh, you know, 30 years ago, I was lucky enough to be in Benin in West mm -hmm. Africa. Wow. And, and I got to spend time. I got to spend time at a girls school where they were learning numeracy. And in the evening, like one evening, they came and just sang and danced for me to share their culture. But the way they do that call and response in yeah. prayer yeah. and bringing stuff in um, in the video, I'm going to show, I think my favorite subtitle is <laughs> breathe and praise. Yes. Breathe <laughs> and Praise. praise and the fact that that, that it and, and, and it's interesting like for those of us who have grown up in you know the scientific method in the western world and how we take these things and we separate science from art and philosophy and religion mm -hmm. and to be in a circumstance where we can take these very primal things of movement and song that came from a place of praise and integrate them into conversations about healing and transformation it's just, it's just such a beautiful lovely reminder that it doesn't have to be so like you all know me i am super organized i'm super structured like i have a structure to my sessions so i can support my clients the best and just to be human and sing and to do that sort of stuff in the healing <laughs> process is just like it's magic it really is well, sharing music is like sharing a meal i mean you're you're it's intimate you know and singing together that. yes <laughs> and singing together and moving together is expressing your soul through your body and your movement but there's also a science to it i mean you're synchronizing your breathing you're breathing in and breathing out at the same time Call and response is compliance. We're playing. We're a group. We're together. Uh, the brain engages more parts than any other activity when you're doing music because you're engaging all these different parts of your, you know, whole system: the visual, the auditive, the, the, you know, the kinesthetics. It's all there. So if you add the tapping to that, you have this really, really, really powerful group healing combo. And, and it's really interesting as you say that um, Cal Banyan, who is a hypnotist and trains hypnotists, about. 12 years ago, back before we had all of this huge amount of scientific research behind tapping, postulated one day that maybe the tapping doesn't, like tapping doesn't do anything, but you're creating trance by creating that sense of compliance and working back and forth in the way that we mirror and match each other. We now know it's much more than that, but it was interesting for someone who's coming from a hypnosis background to go, oh, look at all of these really good things that you are doing in creating trance and rapport without you even realizing it. I mean, like call and response music there is nothing greater in rapport where you're not only matching each other but you're bringing your emotions into it as you do that thing and they're just magical moments it's like well all of our spiritual traditions have music associated with it because there's that euphoria that comes from that connection and it's beautiful that you're bringing that into the transformational process yeah yeah in, intimate and works and, and really creates the safety because the safety is the number one you want to create an inner safety in the person if they feel safe you have resolved the reaction. That's all there is. And so one of the points in our manifesto is actually, <laughs> just, just say that fast. It's actually know the method, learn the rest. The rest is yeah. all this, what we're talking about now. Absolutely. <laughs> and, 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 and it's interesting, you know, like, you know, when you feel connected, you feel safe. You know, we know that things that are traumatizing are extreme, unexpected and isolating. And I can be around a bunch of people and be isolated. You know, they had they had one of the bombings that they had in the London tube system. They were in a circumstance where the people who sent a text message out and got a text message back were much less likely to be experiencing PTSD mm -hmm. because they weren't isolated. Even though they're trapped in this tiny little tin can with a bunch of other people, mm -hmm. they felt alone unless they got this connection. And I love that, that so when true. I am connecting and singing with someone else i'm not alone i'm not isolated therefore we've taken one step closer to safety i had never thought about it that particular way that's really awesome yeah, yeah. It is. Well, that, that's and the I flip mean, side of lockdown this, 
yeah. Sorry. And Western <laughs> research shows, I mean, singing together, how yep. it makes the, 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 the heart um, in a coherent um, rhythm. And I mean, yeah. it, it connects uh, whether you like it or not. It does. <laughs> awesome. Well, let, let's, let's, let's play this, yeah, this little four-minute yeah, video yeah. of the good stuff, and then we'll talk about it. Here yeah, we go. <laughs> That's all. And, and I just wanted to highlight that that phrase, sharing music is like sharing yeah. a meal, it resonated very, very deeply. That's just absolutely awesomeness inside of that. Cool. Um, 
And the th one of my, the other, the, the praise and breathe, that's my first favorite part. The second favorite part as I was watching it is about two and a half minutes in, there are a group of young men. One mm -hmm. of the guys is beatboxing and they're tapping together. Yeah, and, and the thing that is that I love about that is they're like communally doing something that they obviously feel very cool doing together. It's not this, this is something that is hidden and this is something that I need to be afraid of. This is something that we can do as a community and have a really good time in community doing that together. Like that's <laughs> just so lovely. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I mean, for me it is, I've seen this many times and I have been in those uh, different places, but uh, I, I constantly uh, smile and laugh, and especially this, like you say, the, the last woman there from Sierra Leone, I mean, who, and also the guys around who said, no, 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 you did that one already, you know, now you've finished, and they, you know, and then she do, and then they laugh, and they are all widows of, of war, you know, they are super traumatized, but this is how we have it in our workshops, it is joy, it's laughter, because we bring, you know, bringing in this, especially bringing the parts that come from people themselves. It's not us coming, say, now we do like this, 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 but we check. How do people do? I mean, how do people gather? How do, you know, what do you do together? Okay, so we... We breathe and praise. Okay, that's you know that's good. absolutely. That's and, and 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 I think that I think that's useful for all of us to hear, even locally, not just mm. globally. Like no, when we no, go no. someplace globally, where we're going to a place that the language isn't the same, and the type of music isn't the same, and the food looks very very different, and all of that sort of stuff. It, it's much easier to go. Ooh, I need to be aware of a different point of view. Where mm. you know my next door neighbor has a very different worldview and point of view oh. than me, and recognizing that we, like. The only way I know how to see the world is the way that I see the world. And <laughs> it's, it's always a really, really good reminder to be in a circumstance that particularly when we're showing up as a helper to go, okay, great. Mm -hmm. What are you doing? How can mm -hmm. I just add a little spice to the sauce here to help mm -hmm. you as you navigate this in some mm -hmm. particular way? Mm -hmm. uh, that's so true. And that is actually the first line of our, I mean, we, we talked about this manifest we wrote and we had to stay awake sometime. I'm sorry. Oh, sh yeah. Uh, uh, at one point of time, we were driving far. So we did this, this manifesto. And the first one is, take off your shoes and listen first. Meaning, you come to a place, yeah. you know, you don't step with your shoes and say, this is how we do it, just like you say. You know, and that doesn't matter whether you are with your, like you say, with your neighbor or on the other side of the world. It always is like that, that people feel safe again. And comfortable when they know that, okay, I'm not going to do something strange or these guys be bopping. I mean, they do something that they know very well. But then you add something, a little tool. And that's what we say. You know, you do whatever. We always start by asking, so what do you usually do when you're stressed or traumatized? Or how do you get out of it? And they will say, pray, praying, swimming, listen to the music, walking, smoking, drinking tea, closing the door, sleeping, you know, all these things. And say, it's all fine, except for those who give some some um, bad side effects and bad economy and, and mm -hmm. like, uh, you know, may increase violence. That's, that's not a good idea, but still it works. Otherwise you wouldn't do it. But then if you add this, you perhaps, I mean, most probably you don't need it to make it in those ways. And your walking or your singing will be more, whoosh, you know, yeah. just by adding some tapping. <laughs> yeah, and actually, I mean, what, actually uh, uh, sorry. No, no, go, go ahead. Ulf. Well, I, I just wanted to say that, you know, we actually found when we were working with refugees in Greece, they're coming on these small rafts over from, you know, from the Turkish side and the cold water and there's hypothermia and there are 80 people in a small raft made for 10. And, you know, they're lucky if they make it to the shore on the other side. And when they come ashore, we found, you know, we were humbled because we realized that in true emotional first aid, if you really want to offer something to somebody before you even start introducing tapping or something like that, we, we have the acronym TAS, which stands for, you know, all these three letter abbreviated modalities. So TAS stands for tea and a smile. Because if you offer a person a cup of tea, you are actually yeah. sharing a meal in a way and you're yeah. getting warm and you're getting a physical sensation of safety and you're being offered something and a smile. I mean, that part of the whole thing for me is so much maybe even more important than whatever modality you choose to use. Yeah. And, Remembering and to be human. Yeah. And, and, and like, so part of my life, I, I spend time coaching small business owners into sharing whatever healing and transformational modalities they have. And one of the things I was talking about is like, I spend all day in my techniques. And so that's the thing that I want to share right away. 
But the reality is, is before I can share something useful with you, first, you need to know that I understand you. Second, you need to know I care about you. Then and only then do you care about anything I have to offer you. And so to be able to work our way into it, and always starting with, okay, great. Where are you struggling? Where do you want to go? This is why I care. Once we're able to establish that sort of connection, then we can offer something that is useful. I can remember as a very early practitioner talking people out of wanting to do something out of my own excitement and, and zealotism about wanting to heal the world and just running people over and recognizing it's not about what I have to offer. It's about where they are. And I love the fact that you're just starting with a cup of tea and a smile, and that's the place we start. And then if there's capacity, we're able to introduce or add something else into it as we navigate all of that. Yeah. Yeah. And I mean, that is really uh, because, again, bringing safety by feeling that, oh, we're sharing something. We're sharing something that we both know. In Swedish, we call it fika, which is very important in Swedish. Sweden, it's, you know, taking a cup of coffee or tea and together with, with, with somebody. So that's the most common question. Would you like to have a fika? And then we go, you know. And that is all over or, or a glass of water if you are in South Sudan where it's very hot. Um, but, you know, whatever. But just something that connects you and then checking, just like you say. That's beautiful. Hmm. And so yeah. now that you're, you know, you're in the circumstances, you're stepping into all of this. Like, what are your hopes going forward other than just like reaching more people? You know, there's always more people to reach. Yeah. <laughs> like, <laughs> like, like, like as an organization, like what are, what are the things that you all are planning and what are the things that you are working towards as we're giving opportunities for people to continue to support this really amazing work? Yeah. I mean, we are right now. I mean, we have we have written this book that everybody, I mean, will get. I mean, those who go for the peace package as a PDF, but you can also buy it from Amazon. It's just been translated actually to French and German. And one time we will do it to Swedish. We don't know when, but that is because we work worldwide. But what we actually have been talking about for quite some time, and it's and we do, as you see, a lot of videos. But what we really like to do is to find um, some way to do. Um, uh, a documentary, not a long one, but just one that really portrays the impact of this super simple um, modality of, of tapping in the places where we work. Because we, of course, know how amazing it is. And, 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 and as we say, we train people in so many different places and then they train others. So we have these heroes like some of those um, in the, in the uh, um, slides. I mean, I don't know if you will send them out. You can, we can send them to people they can see. Um, there are people who have been in a training, for example, our Placid uh, Incubito from Rwanda. He learned tapping uh, in 2016. He felt so much big change in himself and he felt like, oh, I'm becoming a normal person. I can cry. I can, you know, I can laugh. I can feel happy. All, all this register of feelings. Um, so through him, we have reached so many more people and, and Pastor John and Dr. Siana, you know, there, there are innumerable people who have taken on the mission to, to teach this. And then we see what they do and we don't always are able to really give it what you say, um, um, the, the value it has by portraying it for others to see really how amazing, easy, as we know about tapping, all of you who have been through tapping, we know how this tool works, but what we really like to do is to, to make a, a, a short but powerful documentary about yeah. um, these people doing this. That's um, uh, one of the to, things. To add to that, I'd also like to say, I mean, we, we're running a project in prisons in Rwanda right now, which has been running for a while. It's a model that's working extremely well. We have fantastic results and we'd like to, you know, we need to find the time and the collaboration and partners to work with that that can write a scientific paper on that. We've been working with addiction recovery. We have preliminary data from the trainings uh, with Dr. Peter Stapleton, w which shows an, a significant, I mean, really significant yep. improvement in symptoms uh, just from doing the very first simple steps in that in addiction recovery. Uh, we So we've been working with BVS, the, the Center for Liberated Child Soldiers uh, in Congo, for a very long time, we have a study from there. And all these studies show one step. And like Anila saying, if you can pair the studies with what most people like to watch, which is actually a documentary or something yeah. informational and short, that would really uh, tell more people that this is there. We would love for, for this to be you know, on the learning of 
you know, you have mouth to mouth and the Heimlich maneuver and manual yep. hygiene, wash your hands and learn at least the base, you know, of the minimum component of tapping, which we believe trauma tapping to be, but there, you know, yep. if you do that, then we have a better place in this world for people. That's awesome. So for all of you who are watching along and you've heard these amazing stories, you want to continue the opportunity to support them in this amazing work, go to 24 hours at tapping.com slash support that $25 piece package. As part of that, you will get the TTT PDF manual so you can dive in deeper and learn more and more about the amazing work that they are doing. Um, let's just take a quick look here at the big board. Um, we're just about 4,200. I think also you were sharing, isn't it, that we have a, an, an app, um, which is, is called Self-Help for Trauma. You know, uh, it goes, um, so so yep. it, you find it both for Android and an iPhone, and it's in 33 languages, I mean, the instructions. So any it's, of you working with refugees as well. Yeah, yep. and it's in the peace package, but it's it's good to know. Yeah. Yep. Thank you so and much. you just search for um, self help for trauma. Is that the name of the app again? Yes. Mm -hmm. Yep. Mm -hmm. Awesome. Great. Well, Oof and Gunila, thank you very much for your time. Thank you for the amazing work that you're doing all over the world. That is way more important than you spending 45 minutes talking with me oh, today. Um, this is what actually makes it reach out. We can't thank you <laughs> enough, Gene. This is actually part of our dream. I mean, we manifested you. you you're here because we said we need somebody <laughs> like Gene who can Excellent. tell them about this because you're so good at it. Awesomeness. Yeah. Well, yeah. thank you very much for your time. Um, so thank what you. we're going to do now...